hello and welcome back and that is right today we are looking at TOS 7 the new NAS operating system still very much in development with TerraMaster intended for much later in 2026 uh, we've managed to get hold of an early access version of this again not intended for static release it isn't perfect by any means right now uh, but it is going to allow us to see some of the things that are cooking over at TerraMaster uh, on the NAS operating system System you're going to be getting with their systems now a few disclaimers we've got to discuss out the gate number one this is still very much an early preview somewhere between an alpha and a beta even during my early use of this I can definitely see where TerraMaster is going with this platform but it is still very much I would argue a good half a year away from full release I'm sure there'll be a public beta but in the meantime you can access a private preview beta of this if you like and uh, give some feedback to TerraMaster on this but more appropriately for some of you and probably more interestingly there is opportunities to win prizes based on that feedback that is given back to them but do 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 keep in mind that this is still very much a software in early development don't go using this for hot data don't go upgrading mission critical data uh, towards a so far from release now it's operating system that you could massively jeopardize your data also I'm not going to go through every bell and whistle of TOS, not only because this is focusing very much on the new additions of TOS in TOS 7, but also because very recently I did a full review of TOS 6. I'll link to it below. There is a full written review going through all the bells and whistles and features, but also a full detailed video where I go through everything. So do check that out if you want to know more about TOS itself, but let's crack on with TOS 7. Now I've removed my camera from on screen because there's going to be quite a lot here to show you. Uh, the first thing you may notice very early doors while I'm going through this is just how responsive this platform is. It's again a lot more colourful, a lot sharper. It's running on a new Linux kernel, that's kernel 61241. Uh, this whole deck we've got here on the side, by the way, is completely customizable. You can really have a play around with what you want to live and where it's going to live. This top bar, again, you haven't got too much of a control. I really hated that grey box facade that the TOS 6 platform had, so I'm kind of glad they've changed that again it's pretty responsive I will say bearing in mind this is a beta again you've got access to a lot of the guides online directly from the user interface let's go back in there uh, but the user interface itself is largely the same but everything has just had an uptick in terms of dynamicism in terms of responsiveness color palette and more so for example um, when you go into the control panel the control panel is largely the same uh, with the icon size some of them changing their locations but uh, a great example here would be if we go into the new storage manager a lot of the key fundamental elements have now been improved upon in their presentation the storage manager in TOS 6 was particularly uh, inconsistent in terms of its design not only now is everything a great deal more graphical but for example here in the storage manager at a single glance we full screen that there we're able to see exactly where each of our drives live in terms of the pools and for example if we were to add in add cache we can see exactly what that's all doing the same as the breakdown into each of the individual drives is just a lot clearer now um, when it comes to the operating system that's running on this system we can see like a defunct drive here this is an example of some of the stuff in beta that is still getting worked on one of my pools I wasn't able to remove this dead icon from a pool that I removed but again this is a working in progress product there now for example when we look at the disk we can go for a disk down here and this has got nothing going on right now so if we manage our available disks we can choose to create a storage port and then from there select a disk if we choose to go ahead and proceed with that it's all largely the same and again whether it is that you want to create new storage pools whether it is you want to create volumes and take advantage of write once read many something we've discussed before displaying information about volumes is a great deal clearer as well and again graphical and if we want to create ourselves a brand new pool for example on an existing area we can do that nice and easily and again things like the uh, write one to read many system have all still been kept in there from tos 6. 
I really do like this new way of laying out all of the information here, giving us some idea about what drives are doing what within each pulse, how they're connected, what their relationship is, and also, for example, if you are missing a trick. So, for example, NVMe Disk 2 down here at the bottom, we can see hasn't had a volume created yet. I do wish there was some way in the logs that would give me a heads up and just an advisory to let me know that's there. And it's a smaller mission, but still it's nice that it's being relayed to me so clearly. Now, talking of uh, system disks, from here we can make our way into the individual disks. We can see that the TOS operating system, we can see which disks it is on. We can see those are the system disks. So unlike, say, a true NAS system where there is an operating system SSD, the actual operating system, more often than not on some turnkey NASes, not including just TerraMaster, stick them on the actual RAID. And that's not going to be for everyone in terms of performance during busy times. So if you go into the system disk option, it does allow you to migrate the system disk onto another disk. So for example, if we want to migrate those away and we had an M.2 NVMe available, we can move it around. It doesn't even have to be a blank disk, although obviously it'll be useful as it is. That's quite a neat way to migrate the operating system around in the system with ease without having to completely reformat the system. Carrying on from storage, we can talk about the File Explorer. Now, the File Explorer isn't new. It's existed not only in TOS, but other NAS operating systems as well. But I will say they have really improved both the UI and the UX here. So, for example, we've got everything from the pin folders here on the left. And remember, we are still talking about a NAS operating system. We're not talking about a client one. We're able to do everything we could in, say, Windows, but now we're using it, and responsibly, I will say, here in TOS 7. So on the left-hand side here, for example, if we want, we can add and attach external storage. We can bolt on additional storage as well via remote folders. If we choose to, and that includes cloud drives, NFS, SMB, and WebDAV. With the cloud services, there's actually a decent number of them provided now for you to bolt on those. Again, something that existed before, but they've just expanded the logic. Um, moreover, from that, not only have we got these user spaces that we can pin things to as favorites, and more and use right click context options in order to do so. But alongside now adding support of online office natively, something that was already available in six, but now is integrated into it. Alongside that, for example, if we want to look at uh, M.2 NVMEs, and we go into here and we see, for example, an ISO, we're actually able now to dig into ISOs. This is a Windows ISO that normally a NAS operating system wouldn't be able to let you do. You don't need to mount it, you don't need to unzip it, you can just get into it, which for me, in a NAS file explorer, is actually pretty bloody rare. And another issue that I've you know, argued for in the past that is a real hindrance when it comes to file explorers in NAS operating systems is when you want multiple windows. Because a number of you, say for example, I wanted to copy the contents of this photos folder here into another directory. Now, normally I would have to right click, or actually we'll go for a non-shared folder. So if we just go for the documents, say I wanted to copy this hex OS folder here, I would need to copy it, or I can select the option to copy to or move to, where it will open up a context option to send stuff to. Now that's quite familiar, but say I wanted to copy this, and I still want to be able to see this like I would with multiple windows on Mac or Windows, and still see the directory. So I can just select a tab, and now I've got multiple tabs on the go. So this allows me, say for example there, to now paste in this file and folder here into the background and let it copy over, but I can still flick between these tabs and create multiple tabs here along the top to filter between the different areas of my NAS. Now I know that sounds pretty bloody basic if you were looking at a Windows File Explorer on your PC, but this is running a NAS in the web browser, remember. This isn't that normal and bloody useful. And the File Explorer definitely just feels nippier. The idea that I can flick in and out, and the fact that it supports WEBP files as well, by the way, is something I've often come across as a problem when it's come to dealing with files in a NAS. It's nice to have them all here. But for all of my nice words about the user interface of TOS 7, I'm gonna say it, uh, I'm gonna say it to you, and I said it to TerraMaster themselves. I really hope they get rid of this button. I understand on a Windows PC, you need a start button. And in this case, when you click it, it opens up recently used applications and services, and there's a search bar. I get it. But at the same time, this button here does exactly the same thing. There's our search bar. There's all our applications and services. 
So why do we need both of those options? Hell, if we want, we can just drag and drop, or more precisely, right click and send to desktop and create our tailored range of apps and services pinned here to the desktop if we choose to on the left hand side. What is this bar doing other than presenting inconsistencies in terms of design, font and layout? Get rid of this sodding box. And needless to say, as you are opening apps and services here along the top, so for example, if I go ahead and open up uh, Docker Manager here, there is the option to pin things to the bar. I've already pinned that one. So if we go ahead and create a new one, so let's select the iSCSI Manager. From there, right click, pin to bar, and that's it. Now it's always going to be there. And again, responsive. It seems like I'm giving a lot of praise for something simple, but we are still talking about a NAS operating system in a web browser. Even the controls on the right, everything you need is kind of there from notifications to assistance to again, a lot of those controlled widgets there that you can play around with and add and remove them as you see fit. Um, the backup application now has a native input there at the top. Once you've installed it, it's kind of direct in there as a de facto range and again most of these are available in TOS 6 but a number of the widgets a lot of the uh, layout text fonts design and icons have now been brought into far more uniformity with many of them being replaced again not going to get into a lot of detail because I've already covered a lot of these in the previous video I just want to highlight just how many of the icons have now been improved upon and when you do want to install new apps and services, another interesting little uh, quirk I'd noticed is once you make your way in, if we list all of the apps, what's really interesting is applications that are installed fully on the system without any kind of containerization are pretty clear because the ones that do use containerization They've got that icon, so you can actually understand which of them are going to be Docker-based and which of them are going to be native within the operating system. This is a minor thing, but it does still mean that you can kind of leverage your level of control and access and ultimately how well signed some of these applications and services are from third parties. And for those of you that are interested in towing the thin line between custom and doing things your way, if you go to the settings options of the control panel, to the right hand side of the updates and everything more, you've got a new developer mode. This new developer mode, ultimately if you enable it, unlocks everything. And it's for those that want to use custom applications, want to use custom script, and again, unlocks a lot of the kernel commission uh, permissions and more. Ultimately, this gives you kind of a much freer and more experimental experience. But do not dick around with this feature if you don't know what you're doing. You could be opening yourself up to some significant issues with regards to security. And next up, we can talk about the virtual machine appliance. Up until recently, TerraMaster's TOS platform always used third-party VirtualBox software, which was starting to feel just a wee bit dated. And now they've introduced their own virtual machine application. This new VM application pretty much does everything. It's a little light, I would say. It's You can't, for example, back up an image of your system and then remote mount it onto the uh, hypervisor here. That's a bit too advanced for this. But as a virtualization tool, it kind of gives you everything you want. Again, loading up individual storage spaces to make sure VMs run in the right locations, allowing you to create them on the fly very easily. Dedicated network control within the virtual machine appliance, making sure, for example, if you've got two physical ports or virtual networks, that you can make sure the VMs are built on top of those uploading different ISOs onto the system. And again, we've got that ISO level dipping in and out built already into the file manager, but this means that we can find those ISOs within the system and make sure they're accessible as an available ISO for our virtual machine deployments. And creating a virtual machine is incredibly straightforward. Again, not too much to hassle here. If we go for that, we'll give it, say, let's go for two cores, give it two gig of memory. Go from there, select a virtual storage, select a network if we've controlled one, or give it no network access at all. Our starting ISO, any ISOs that we've got, it's all really easy, straightforward, bish, bash, bosh, done. And if we go to an existing virtual machine that we've got in operation here, it opens up in a brand new tab as you'd expect. And again, like this one, we'll just try that Ubuntu VM out. All the options are pretty much what you're used to there with VNC. So again, all straightforward, I'm not gonna call it groundbreaking stuff, but I will say this virtual machine 
uh, application is still definitely better than when it was rolling out with VirtualBox with very few overall updates there. We'll come back to that virtual machine. This is what happens when you try to boot Ubuntu into the memory rather than installing it fully. But again, you've got your virtual machine tool built in now. Pretty much all of the best bits of TOS 6 are here. For example, that encrypted storage area, bang, you can still take advantage of it really easily. For those within the network settings that want to take advantage of isolation mode within the security, uh, security settings, that is available for you to just enable whenever you need it. Everything from TOS 6 is present here. It's just been improved upon in its presentation, as well as improvements being made to not only how icon to lay out the UX and the management of the control via that kernel upgrade but also individual apps and services being better displayed as containers or not the virtual machine application being uh, much more centralized within TerraMaster's own ecosystem and just the layout of apps and services just being a great deal better here but this is still a decent ways away from full release I'm sure a public beta will land, if not within the very, very end of Q4, the definitely the beginning of Q1 2026. I'm really looking forward to hearing what you guys think about it. And ultimately, if you've watched this video and you watch my video on the full review of TOS 6 and all of its bells and whistles, God, I'm glad to see the end of that bar up there. Then do let me know in the comments below. But this has been TOS 7, the very early alpha slash beta. Let's talk about it in the comments. Apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.